live on the Metal Voice with my buddy Rich Catino. What's up, Jimmy? From Metal Asylum, also uh, the Metal Hall of Fame, and also writer for Brave Words. And today yep. we are going to, Rich, just set it all up. You do that while I do some settings over here. Just tell us what right. we're going to be reviewing. We are unboxing the Molly Crew Shout at the Double 40th Anniversary box set. This is my original though, so, but it's in your, it's in your box set here. So there's all kinds of goodies. Jimmy's got it still sealed, so he's gonna take off the plastic, right? We're gonna check it out and talk about the audio because I have, you have it too, the original CD that they remastered yep. in '99, I want to say, so somewhere around there. There it is. There it is, guys. So this and is then the you get it again yeah. in this yeah. box set, but it's a yes. paper sleeve. Yep. In this box set, and then there's all sorts of other goodies. Yep. So this is what we're going to do. Exactly what Rich said. We are going to unbox the 40th anniversary of Motley Crue's "Shout at the Devil." And just a little bit of background for everybody: this has been is a limited edition box set, LPs, cassette. CD. It has everything. Mm. This is everything you need. BMG recently announced Year of the Devil, a multi-configuration celebration of Devil. Shout at the Devil. The centerpiece of Year of the Devil is a limited edition super, super, we shall say, box mm. set, which feature, features the newly remastered album on LP, CD, and cassette. Also yep. included are the reproductions or reproductions of the original 7-inch signal singles to Young to Fall in Love, Looks that kill among a pentagram seance board, devil board with the metal planchette, a metal seven inch adapter, album artwork. Uh, basically, it's coming out October the 27th as the yep. 40th anniversary. I'm going to rip it all open. Cool. Rich, you can speak to the audio is... aspect because I have not compared the two. You right. can speak to the audio. Okay. I'll speak to what's inside the box. Okay. So you want to do that as we get to the different items. You can open up. You want to open up the box first and show a couple of the goodies. And then we'll talk about yes. our audio as you pick those things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. First of all, let's talk about what the heck this thing is. It's I definitely a box. This, <laughs> I got this in the mail yesterday. I had absolutely no idea what the hell it was. Because I forgot about it. So it comes in the mail, just so everybody understands how thick this is. What do you want to compare this? You want to compare this to a CD? <laughs> it's like it's like the rat and the docking reissues that they did, but it's it's like two of those put together. That's how big the box is. Right? This is heavy. I would give this uh four pounds, five pounds, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. And then you can just everybody sees again how thick it is. Yeah. It smells fresh. And they list fresh. all the I like items. I always that's... smell it. I always like the smell because I, you know, our youth. There it was like it was like buying the records when we bought them back in the 80s, right? When you open them up. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Okay. I have just a little cut here. I have not opened it yet. It is. We were going to not only look at it, but we're going to smell it. Okay. Like back in the day. Because back in the day, that's what we did. Yeah. yeah right? Smell it, like new, smell. it smelled like new records. This is the first rip. Here it comes. You guys ready? I have to get a first rip because you know what always happens. You're kind of like, uh -huh. I can't rip it. I can't open it. Can't, it is shrink wrap. There we go. I'm As you're doing now, I'll just show off. you that. Jimmy, I'm I'll show you that. I, I you, like I was showing you before the original vinyl. Mm -hmm. And I still actually have the insert that it came with back in the 80s. Remember the insert? Hey, yeah, I got the vinyl. Yes, I have the vinyl somewhere too. Yeah, still have right that off, insert. Very cool. Right off the bat, the feel. You have it in back of you, right? Yeah, it's right here next to my house. Look at this feel. Look at this feel. The feel feels like mm, it's, it's got a little it's texture. Got, it's got texture. That's the right yeah. word. It doesn't. It's not slippery. Like it's gonna fall out. Or you're gonna right. fall out of your hand. On the right. back of it, it has the insert, like the album, old album insert. Right. Look at that. Yep. Everything that you're getting in there. That's right. So there you go. And it's it's really a box set. I mean, it's a box and yeah. it's a set. And it's yep. a box set. So it's look at this. Even the side has some nice decor. Yep. It feels some very, design. very nice texture. There it is. Yep. Right. There's the back of it. Kind of looks like a uh, 
Nice, nice, nice box. Look at that, beautiful. Nice. Do we know how much this is somewhat going for? Yeah, this is going for something like three fifty a oh, really? US on Amazon. Yeah, Canadian, okay. that's about two thousand dollars. <laughs> no, no, it's probably about. I would guess about four twenty-five Canadian. Yes. Okay. And the euro and euros and the British pounds, it's probably like I don't know. 20 bucks, 20 euros, 20 pounds. All right, here we go. All right, let's unbox this puppy. Let's unbox her. I'm unboxing. Okay. Oh, wah, wah, wee, wah. Look at that. Right. This is the Ouija board that they're talking about. They definitely about. made sure they incorporated art all around, mia. right? Look at this. The Ouija. Taken from the French word oui. Look at that. So you can actually do a seance. <clears throat> I don't know if the original album had this, but I think it's not. No, That's the only thing that the, mine came with was... Part, in the top part, there is a Ouija. Mm. Okay. If you're into that kind of stuff. Okay, let's, let's see what we got on the first layer. Ooh, a pentagram. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this, look at this. This is just some sort of cardboard pentagram. You yeah. can uh, scare your parents with, like back in the day, they were scared of this, right? Yeah, that was on, you know, that was on the cover. Yeah, yeah. So Jim Harrison saying it's a three fifty Canadian or three seventy seven Canadian, so it's okay. around there, US too. Look at that. Look at that. And that's you kind of I like this very thick, thick yeah. cardboard right there. Nice, yeah. nice reproductions of these things. They're not Beautiful. lightweight at all. But no. here's a little uh, fun fact here. I just noticed when I was looking mm -hmm. at the. The merch thing that came with the original one yes pentagram is a regular star if you look yes. at the when they did it on the album and then the you know everything else it was pointed down so this when they did this back in the day wasn't like that interesting little difference i'll tell you um the album's title and the band's use of the pentagram caused a great deal of controversy we're oh, old yeah. enough to remember this yeah of course and uh, i I'm, I'm assuming they went from the slant Mm -hmm. to the straight up right yeah. yeah um and it was also i think the song uh looks that kill uh, uh no from the pmrc um the um but, 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 uh, let me look it up what song was it uh, 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 uh maybe uh, bastard guys. bastards yeah bastard that song was on the list from uh, tipper gore and I remember the Looks That Kill video had the pentagram in it too. It spun. And the fire in the middle. Um, yeah, yeah. So they had, so you they had, definitely had the whole presentation going on. And if you want to even go back further, Nikki Six brought it from the band Sister, you know, mm -hmm. a theatrical band that uh, Blackie Lawless was in. So it's kind of, he lifted it from there. He brought mm -hmm. it into Molly Crew and sort of that. And what was going on at the time? Uh, Molly Crew, I'm not sure if you saw them open for Ozzy. No, I didn't Back see that. Back in 84, I did not see it because when Ozzy came here, it was Rat mm. that was opening up. Oh, cool. Yeah, in 84. Uh, the Us, Us Festival, the album was released and mm -hmm. the Us Festival was not too long after that or it was a little bit before. I don't remember the exact timing of it all. Yeah. But they were virtually unknown to the metal yeah. world. Right. right, aside from the West Coast, you know, the LA yeah. clubs and stuff. That's right. And to me, when, you know, I saw the Us Festival, I saw Motley Crue, I kind of heard about them in a way, and I go, yeah. oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Uh, as long as well as Quiet Riot, who were yep. on the bill, right? Yep. I mean, and they, it was like in the morning when they were playing. So it was kind of like they're wearing oh. all their gear yeah. in, in the scorching sun. And yeah. Uh, yeah. The P PMRC, yes, it was bastard, and that was targeted by uh, Tipper Gore mm. back in the day. Any other fun facts? Uh, there were a lot of demos that have been re-released like we mentioned right here right, right which that comes included which we have that in that box set when you get to it yeah yeah and let's let's start opening her up and we could talk cool. about the music as well cool so here we go here's another this is a second one the second pentagram like the mm -hmm. right way here just looks like here looks like a uh, rush but then he goes Molly. yeah <laughs> okay then we have this what's going on here now we got the splatter Splatter one. Yeah, so we're already at three sort of cardboard, uh, you know, pop outs or whatever you want to call them. This is the designs, graphics. Yeah, designs. So again, Rush. 
but now Molly could. And let's open her up from here. Look at this. Here we go. Wow, look at this. This is nicer. Do you have the original album there? Yeah, I do. Mamma mia, look at this. Yep, wow. same opens up gatefold as well. Let's let's compare the original. So you're saying this is a replica of the original album. Yeah, because it even comes with, well, aside from the insert, when you um, get to the vinyl, it has all the lyric sheet and everything. So this was the original, and that comes in that, too. Now, from my memory, the original album that I had, I think it, it didn't open up, at least not my version. Oh, really? I, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe, you know, I've forgotten because it's, it's kind of lost in my parents' house, so I don't yeah. remember exactly. Maybe certain pressings did. I don't remember. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I just do not remember. But look yeah. at this. Is, let me t let me let's look at the original. Do you have the red on the back there? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Cool. Yes. So you got it's a an exact reproduction replica. replica. You know what's cool about that? It's I, I kind of like that. I do yeah. like the uh, the sort of you know let's let's try to like make it let's reproduce what doesn't exist anymore. I kind of like right that. exactly. And you get the lyrics too. It's always good to have the lyrics. And wow, man, the, the sort of the texture of this is beautiful. Wait, hold on. I'm yeah. Gonna, uh, focus here. Let me have to focus. Yeah. Here. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, these... Right. Uh, these Let me see remasters. the back of the original. Let me see the back of the original. These remasters are very nice. Wow. Look at... Okay, with only this part here is a little bit different. I don't know. Right, it's a little sounds. shinier. It's got a little bit of gloss to it. Yeah. But the rest of it is very matte, you know, but it Tom looks Werman, very sharp. Yeah. Tom Werman, who actually did produce this. Mm -hmm. Should also you know give a shout out to him. Yeah, Here we that album sounds great. Him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. So just tell me about when you put this album on. Tell me, it sounds great. What, what were some differences you may have noticed? When I oh, when I played the remastered. Yeah, yeah. So just like when we talked about the Dokken ones and the Rat ones, there's mm -hmm. really not too much of a difference because they really did sound good back then too. Just from the '80s, like the Rat and the Dokken had a little more high end, right? A little more yeah. trebly. But with the Motley Crue and those albums too. It's a little bit like tighter now, so it's not so much high end. It's a little more bass and drums, a little bit fuller, I guess you could say. Okay. But it doesn't take away. And, and, and now we're comparing the original LP. Yeah. To this newly remastered, re-released LP, correct? Right. Exactly. So it's just maybe a little more tighter. Still have the, you know, you still hear your drums. You still got the cymbals. Vince is still on top of everything, but it's just a little warmer, you could say, a little bit tighter, brought in a little bit closer without it getting muddy or anything. Yeah. Still, you know, very clean and clear, but punchy and heavy and crunchy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the thing about vinyl is over time, it sort of loses a little bit of that sound quality. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the vinyl itself gets warped. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's nice to have a fresh new LP. That, that's right. Especially LP. from, you know, the 80s because they were so thin back then. Yeah. We should talk about that, too. You no, know, this is very. Look at how thin this is. These things were everybody yeah, knows those, everything from the 60s, 70s and 80s. Everything was so like paper thin, the vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let me just feel how thick it is, because I've noticed that all new LPs that are being yeah. released are new vinyls. Wait yeah. a second. Wow, wow, wee, wow. Here, look at this. Oh, the color. Yeah, very cool. Holy mackerel. Look at yeah. that. I didn't even, I should have opened that first. So let's look at the original that. LP. Oh. Let's look at the original one. Okay. Yeah, typical. This yep. here, look at that. It does not, does it bend? It uh, bend up just we, a little we bit. We need to be careful here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yes, okay, it just does. a little bit. Yeah, here it's very, very thick. Yeah. Right. It and even if you look at mine, even over time, if you look at it, it almost gets a little bit of a wobble to it. Yeah. Not you know, this. Not, not this. Sucker. It's not completely straight across anymore. You know what? It is very. Somebody said hypnotic. Look at that. Rich. It's a cool splatter rich, effect. All these, all these rich, remasters that everybody's doing when they do rich. different colors, like um, did you ever see the sabotage ones? No. Those look great too. All the different color vinyls. Okay, let's put this away. This is, so far, I'm loving this. This is great as a, not only is it great to have one of the best, this is the best mm -hmm. Molly Crew album. This is the, the quintessential 
Motley Crue album. It's still my all-time favorite. And this, the sound overall, just the band itself, you know, there's a little bit of punk there, there's glam, and there's metal. But right? it's very metal. It's, it's so very metal. It's so it, metal. It I love yeah. it. Okay, let's see what else we got now. I'm taking this part out. What is this? That is those demos. Oh, on a separate vinyl. Look at that. Yep. Let's talk about these demos a little bit. Cool. Which we're familiar with a few of them because they pre previously appeared on that remaster. Okay. Yeah. Right? The crucial crew. Right? What do you think about uh, Shout Out the Devil, that demo in, in general? I mean, people have heard it. Yeah, it wow. sounds pretty good. I like these demos from Crew because these are pretty well produced. They don't sound terrible, you know? You can actually hear everything going on. There's a wow, pretty decent, look at that. Look yeah, at there's that. a pretty decent mix to these, wow. you know? Wow, that's pretty cool. Very thick as well. Yeah. So this is the first time that these demos have been all together or put together on vinyl. Correct. As a sort of single album. Yeah. Maybe there's bootlegs of these somewhere in the world. I don't know. But here we go. Molly Crew. Shout out the devil. Yeah. I like I like Shout Out the Devil, but I like uh the actual album version better than the demo. Same here. I think I, I but I would say, yes, it's a cool, raw alternate, Shout yes. at the Devil. Mm -hmm. But I do prefer the original. Then you have yep. Looks That Kill. Again, a cool alternate. And the, the yeah. phrasing of the vocals are a little bit different. Yes. I know, I wrote about that when I sent in my review to Brave Words. I really like what Vince does on this album because it's alternate deliveries to some of the lyrics and how yes. he, he pronunciates some things. And it's really almost, it goes back to Too Fast for Love almost. The way yes, he, it does, you know, yes. sing some things. Very cool. Yeah. I like it. But the music is still, you know, it's still got that metal punch and everything like the whole record Shadow the Devil has. Yep. 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 You know? Knock him dead, kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not bad. It's not yeah. bad. I do prefer the album version. So do uh, I. Too Young to Fall in Love. Uh, the demo, right? Yeah. That's on this year, I believe, right? I like the album version better than that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Hotter Than Hell. And now, which was on uh, the, the next album. Theater of Pain. Theater of Pain. Um, that as one, as well. this one has less reverb. Yeah. Right? Where yeah. Theater of Pain is a more glossy, more polished. Yeah. Even his scream, it's, a, it's sort of like you, he, his scream sounds so faint on the, on the album version, mm -hmm. on Theater of Pain. Where on this one, his scream is coming full force. Yeah. You can actually hear it and you get, you know, you get, you know, all pumped up when you hear it. Mm -hmm. I do yep. like And this is a little bit raw too. It's a little heavier. I think I do like this hotter than hell or louder than hell better than the theater of pain version. I think so too. Yeah. What about I Will Survive? That one's okay. I could see why that didn't make an album. Okay. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. And um and then Black Widow, which was released on the Red White and Crew compilation which I remember was that. in 2005 so we did hear that I, I like it i like black widow i do too i like black widow that's a that's a song that could have fit well on i think shout yeah yeah it's a very cool song yeah so overall thumbs up to this you're saying in, audio, yep. in terms of audio what about yep. audio when you compare this to uh, this, this year um it's kind of the same there's not much of a difference okay yeah i didn't notice much of a difference but like I said, these demos, usually demos a lot of times sounds terrible. These yeah. are good sounding demos. They are. They are. I agree. I mean, less of the gang vocals on uh, Shout at the Devil mm -hmm. and Looks That Kill. Because, yeah. you know, you're going into the studio, you're going to put a little bit more of the back vocals in there, right? Right. But I would agree with you. The Shout at the Devil songs are a lot better than the demos. Mm -hmm. but you know what? These are pretty good alternates. They are. Yeah. Like I said, Looks That Kill is really cool. I like the way Vince sings it. It's different. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, what do we got here? That we got the, uh, well, I had, I opened that up already. That, that the tarot shirt. cards. Tarot yeah, the tarot cards. cards, yep. Well, I'll open them up. There's a Mick, who's no longer in the band, right? A magician. We got 
Tommy Lee, the lover. He's like uh, Paul Stanley here. Yeah. Or the star child. And the son. That's cool. And did you ever notice, I, I spoke to Thor, you know, this whole Mad Max look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. There is a coincidence of the Mad Max look coming from Thor, who had that Mad Max look yeah. prior to Molly Crew. Now, again, I don't know if they lifted it or not, or maybe Mad Max was very popular at the time. <laughs> yeah. I remember everybody kind of lifted it. All those clothes were in Hip Parade or in a circus. You remember that? And all the ads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Thor kind of used that Mad Max look, but then again, Mad Max came out around that time too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see how popular culture sort of bled into the music culture. Into the metal, yeah. But it was a great look at, you know, the spikes and the shredded clothing and the leather and the denim and everything. It's great. And what's this here? Oh my Lord. I don't know what this is. Holy, what the heck? Oh my God. Did you get this? Yeah. What is this? Like a, put your pencils in here? Demon, uh, I guess a little, uh, what does it say on the label? It says it's a what they call it. Devil it's not a shot glass. Right? It's, um, no, this is like you put your pens. in. Oh, devil candle holder. Oh, it's a candle holder. Okay. Candle holder. So if you want to conduct a seance, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I'm the devil. Very nice. Very nice piece. Very nicely sculpted. It's not, you know, crappy. It's very um, well put together. Now, I had this too back in the day. So did I. It comes with a Motley Crue cassette because I yeah, had the I'm album, not opening the CD. Though. I'm sorry. No, I'm not opening this up either. It'll I'm be not either. millions. <laughs> But it's Look cool. It's a red cassette. I don't know if you can see that, but this is a red cassette now. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Wow, very cool. Yeah. And we got a what's in here? Oh, look, another surprise. Do I open That's this? That's where go ahead. You can um take them out. Those are the singles. Ooh. Yep. Look at that. Whoa, look at this. Holy moly. Yeah. So we have well, let me open these up here. Very nicely dressed up. Yep. Colored. Whoa, look at that. You <laughs> need one of those sort of up. like those little stud things to play on. I yep. Guess. Yeah. I have one of those on my vinyl. Yeah. So, so I played on. these actually, Jim. Take me to the top and too young to fall in love. Okay. So tell me about those, the quality. Too young to fall in love virtually sounds the same. I don't hear the difference with the remix. Okay. I'm curious to know when that remix actually was done for this, how old that is, you know, but yeah. I don't hear a difference and take me to the top. Sounds like it does from the debut. Yeah. Okay. You know, it'd be cool so talking about the idea. debut. It'd be good if they re-released that, but the leather records version, that'd be cool. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes, yes, absolutely. Cause it was, Oh, look at this one. This one's white. Yep. Side a looks that kill, which was a big smash hit. That's on how the I radio. got into them pretty much. That was the, that was the song. That this was is the, the album. song. Piece of your action. Yep. Okay, great well. song too. Again, off the, their debut album. Yep. Which is probably the best song on the album, I would believe. I think. Very nice. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. Just, you know, everything is just yeah. beautiful. And one of them on the back of the Two Young to Fall in Love, you got the tour dates. And then on the back of the Looks That Kill, you got mm -hmm. the lyrics to the song. So far, wow. All right, let's yeah. see what else we got here. We got a little, oh, we got a little treasure chest here. Look at that. What's this? Oh, a yeah. Bag. Little bag. Little bag. A change purse, right? Hey, I'm going to go bring my that's, change. Uh, that's Take underneath the handkerchief with the singles. That's on the bottom of that in the box. Okay, let's take a look inside here. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that. Look at that sound here. Cool. What's in there? Some coins. What's in there? Those Maybe are the. They gave us some money. What do they call those? The. Oh, look at this. What the hell's that? What is that? Well, yeah, what are they called here? I'm looking at the listing here. They're called something. Sounds like something from Ikea. Oh, um, what's that? That would be for the Ouija magnets. board. That's for the oh, Ouija board, right? This is for the Ouija board. Okay, yeah. what do they call this? Let's take a look here. They're uh, called... Uh, metal Pentagram 7-inch... I know that's not it. Metal uh, plant, planchet, I guess. If somebody knows what these are used for. Metal planchet, I guess, if, if you pronounce it that way. 
I guess this would be for the Ouija board. Like you kind of yeah, move it, yeah. right? I'm not and sure this what here, I don't know what you do with this, but it's a that's how you use. That's what you use on the Ouija board. That's the thing they oh, move okay. around. So this is like a pick. It's sort of designed as a pick, but beautiful, right. nevertheless, beautiful. Yeah, very nicely so done. Yep. Let's put it back in the change purse. Maybe I'm gonna go to the store and put all my my loonies and toonies in here. That's what <laughs> we have in Canada. All right, what do we got next? Oh la la! Look at this. And just everybody knows how it's all set up. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get this out. I don't want to break anything. Oh, there it is. That's the and it comes with a CD. Yeah, so if you paper, don't, if you're too lazy to go put it on, yeah, look at paper sleep. But it's, oh, look at that. There it is. Yep. Yeah. This version doesn't come with those demos. But if you have the crucial crew version from '99, that has some of the demos. Horrible. Rich, I'm scared to open this up anymore. Okay. Oh, That's everything I think. That's it. Yeah. So you wanted to know about the CDs to compare them, right? Because I played them. Yes, go ahead. As I try to figure out what the heck I'm doing here. So and there's an actually looks like on the inside. Yeah, nice. Go ahead. Gives you gives you room to have, you know, everything sit in there and not get it damaged. Yep. Go ahead. Um the ninety nine one definitely mm -hmm. sounds slightly different than this new one. Okay. This one also has a little more high end to it. Mm-hmm. And then this one again, like the vinyl, it's a little bit tighter sounding. Okay. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a trend. Well, it's different. You know, your difference this is 99. Technology has advanced. Right. So it is definitely slightly different. A little bit, like I said, a little more punchier, a little warmer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> How would you compare the CD quality to the vinyl? Like the new CD mm. to the new vinyl? What would, what would you say? I think the CDs always come out with a little more of your high end and your trouble without losing your bottom end. Okay. But the vinyl, I think it preserves that and presents it a little bit more with your, your little bit of a tighter mm -hmm. transfer, right? And you got your bass and your drums, but you can still hear your cymbals and the punchiness and everything. It doesn't, it doesn't lose that. It just feels a little bit, like I said, a little bit tighter. Okay. I felt the same thing with the rat ones and the same thing with the Dawkins. Great. Um, is there and anything CDs else? CDs are a little louder, by the way. The CDs come out a little bit louder, too. Well, that's the technology of today, right? Versus yeah. 1999 when it was released like right. this, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you what the cassettes. I mean, that's one thing you can't tell. But, you know, right. cassettes is more like a uh, small gift today yeah. right, than anything. Uh -huh. Sort of like, hey, that's cool little uh cassette just sort of a, is a souvenir in a sense. Yeah. Right? I yeah. don't think everyone's actually cranking out their, uh, you know, putting on their cassettes and putting right. them on their ghetto blasters. Right. Yeah. But it's a cool little treat. We'll say. Agreed. Um, again, you know, this album went four times platinum. It's probably, you know, one of their most known albums. I think any, you know, it, there's yeah. just hits right across the album. Too Young to Fall in Love, Shout at the Devil, Looks at Kill, Red yep. Hot using that double bass drum. Yeah. There's just so many great tracks. Great uh, cover of Helter Skelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, I'm Knock Him Dead Kid, 10 Seconds to Love and Danger, uh -huh. which has got some great drumming on that as well. Yeah. I don't know. Is there anything else we, we can and, say? And that little song? instrumental that Mick does. God bless the children of the beast was this yes. nice little yes. dynamic change throughout the album, you know? Yep. 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 I agree. Um, yep. Tom Werman, who does the production. I love that guitar tone. It sounds like it has less reverb, mm -hmm. right? It just sounds, but even crunchy. It, it sounds crunchy and that's the so right crunchy. word. It's got a very punky feel, like I said before, but mm -hmm. it's probably their most metal album. Oh, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent metal. Yeah. I love Vince Neil's vocal tone throughout the mm -hmm. whole album. Yeah. And that's what separates this band from all the other bands of that era. It's his tone. You know yeah. right away this is Motley Crue. Yep. I think Tommy. but everybody I think everybody from that first wave had that quality too. Like Twisted Sister didn't sound like Quiet Rice. Yes, agreed. Rat didn't agreed. sound like Doc and yep. Wasp yep. didn't sound like I don't know, Helix, you know, it, those guys from that 82 to 85 period, no one sounded the same. That's a very good point. Yep. Um, then, of, of course, we're still in 83 where that 
that transition into complete hair metal didn't happen yet, right? That was like 86, 87. That's right. So we still had that raw metal, punky, uh, catchy. Mm. And and, and the thing about this album is so melodic. I mean, you could play it on... And that's why they played it on the radio, right? And mm-hmm. that's where it grew the audience. They had such a huge audience because it was accessible. And that was the key word. And MTV played Looks That Kill all the time. I mean, yeah, that and Livewire just all the time. And then when I, Theater of Pain yeah. came out and Home Sweet Home was the hit ballad, that was even played even more. Actually, Rich, I will take back what I said. The first time I heard of Motley Crue was Livewire. And I'll tell you how it was. Back before MTV or Much Music here in Canada, Mm. or maybe at the beginning of that, we didn't have the, it was all scrambled. It was Mm. a specialty station, right? It was all scrambled our end. We We had one of those here too. So you had to like pay to to be part of that channel. So music videos was really big back then. And Livewire came out as a video. And people would buy video compilations. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Like you go to the store and you buy, oh, here's like, you know, 20 videos by 20. Bags. Yeah, the VHS. You could rent these things or yeah. you could buy them. And I think it was either a friend or a cousin of mine who had like a video compilation. Mm-hmm. And on it was Livewire. And that was the first yeah. time I ever heard Motley Crue. This is before Looks That Kill. Right. So, wow. It was like, ooh, this guy's setting his pants on fire and, you know, yeah. it's, or whatever it was. I can't remember. And it was like, yeah. it was, and that was like a real punky metal song. right? It was. Yep. Agreed. Probably one of my favorite songs. That's pretty much it. Anything else you like to add? No, I think we covered everything. We did really good. All right. So everybody, you know, I'll show it again. Motley Crue, Shout at the Devil. Their quintessential album. One of their best albums, I would say. I, it is their best album. Next to the first album, that is. I wonder why they did this before Too Fast for Love. Maybe they're doing something like I was saying. Maybe we're getting the leather records version or something, you know? I don't know if BMG owns Too Fast for Love because this mm. is by BMG. Yeah. So I don't know. That could be also, there could be a rights issue, a licensing issue. We don't mm. know. But you know what? I think if you've got the bucks and you're a huge collector, yeah, you know, it's it's worth it. You know, I, yep. I again, you know, if you're the biggest Motley Crue fan and you've owned so many versions, this is a nice sort of limited edition, at least for myself. Yeah. Very well, a great presentation. It's not mm-hmm. everything. So you only listen to CDs. You could listen to CDs. You could just sit there on top of your desk and you could say, hey, right. you got my box set. Yeah. That's it. All right, man. Listen, awesome. everybody, have yourself Thank a you. great Sunday. Thanks for being on. Rich from Brave Words, Metal Thanks. Hall of Fame. And As always, Asylum. Jimmy. .net. And buddy, we'll talk soon. Yep. See you guys next time.